Yes, Matthias, thank you very yeah. much. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks, Eddie. Um, I have to say, after two years of COVID, it's weird to present in front of real people. <laughs> I'm a little bit intimidated, but great that you all showed up tonight. Um, I'll just quickly change the slides. If you want to grab a drink or go to the bathroom, this is a good idea, uh, good opportunity now. Or if you <laughs> just want to um, sit tight, that's also fine. Uh, there's one organizational remark. Um, uh, we'll go to a bar afterwards, so uh, you're welcome to join us. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. Two more talks, and then we're going to a craft beer place close to Rosa Luxemburg. Platz, uh, U-Bahn station, it's called Kask, so it's five minutes walk from here, around eight, nine. Some of us are going there, you can just uh, follow us along. Und jetzt? Alles geht okay? Ja, super. Okay, super. Alright. But for until you presenting probably make them so this side. Yeah, this if it's yellow you you mute it and if it's green, I will have you on the thing. Okay. All right. Um, So, Okay, uh, before I start, I have to say thank you to a few people because, um, yeah, uh, we didn't organize this alone. So, um, first of all, uh, Deconium Data Management, who are sponsoring this event tonight. Um, then our Markcom team, who helped us, uh, yeah, getting this mic all the way from Stuttgart. It's this very nice vintage mic. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I only use microphones like that when I sing karaoke, so it's <laughs> a bit weird. Go ahead. <laughs> later, later. <laughs> Uh, I'm not that bad at it, actually. <laughs> and then last uh, but not least, a uh, yeah, big thank you to our great office management team, Jonas and uh, Mati, who ordered the food and set up the space. Uh, they did an amazing job, and I'm looking forward to organize um, more meetups in the future. <laughs> so maybe a big round of applause to them. <laughs> great. Um, Cool. Uh, so our presentation is called uh, Clearing the Way, Our Journey with Snowplow at Volkswagen. 
Uh, so we would like to take you on a small journey um, and tell you what we've been doing with Snowplow at Volkswagen over the last two and a half years. Uh, we integrated it in uh, mobile applications, but also in web applications to do uh, tracking. And in the beginning, we would like to tell you a little bit more about ourselves, like who are we at Deconium Data, at Carriot, and like how do we work together? What were our motivations for using Snowplow? Um, we'll highlight a few like success stories, like what have we accomplished, what is the advantage uh, to our approach, and um, then we give a short outlook about what we are planning for the next year, 2023, and we have a very interesting use case coming up there. And in the end, we also have like um, some more technical topics on challenges that we were facing and how we could solve them maybe in the future to improve the performance and also the scalability. And yeah, if you have any questions, we will have a short Q&A section at the very end. But let's start right at the left here where you see this little um, Volkswagen bully, bully van. So if you search snowplow at Volkswagen, you end up with these funny images. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, this is one use case from the physical world. And uh, actually I put the slide here because I find most of the pictures very funny. And you know, especially the one with the teeth here, it's kind of, would be nice to test drive it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you use open source software, um, you end up with very creative solutions sometimes. And um, also the use cases can take different shapes and colors. And that's why like we put it here. And um, before we start talking about snowplow tracking and um, how we are using it, a few words regarding Volkswagen and Deconium and Carriot. So as many of you might know, the Volkswagen group owns uh, several car brands, like very big ones like Volkswagen, Audi, Seat, Skoda, and a few others. And uh, Carriot is the software branch from uh, Volkswagen. It started in 2020. Uh, it was called the Car Software Organization back then. Um, they renamed it to Carriot uh, last year. And Deconium, and we had a Deconium office at the moment. Deconium is a digital agency. It has been around for uh, 26 years. We have uh, more than 2,000 employees worldwide. And Deconium is a 100% subsidiary of Carriot, uh, also since the beginning of 2020. But we also serve uh, many different clients from other industries. We have many projects in consulting, but also software engineering and data engineering, data science analytics. So if you have any questions regarding Deconium, reach out to some of our Marcom people here. They will be happy to answer your questions. And yeah, this brings me to um, the question that, yeah, what did we do with Snowplow? So two and a half years ago, we at Deconium Data were approached by some of our carrier colleagues and they asked us, hey, can you set up a Snowplow pipeline to do tracking in one of our mobile applications? And we were like, okay, sure, uh, but we don't have any in-house expertise on Snowplow, <laughs> but we can try to come up with a POC maybe. And then the mobile application that we started with is uh, the Volkswagen Reconnect ID app. So you find this app in the Play Store and it's this one very handy uh, mobile application that you can use when you own a uh, Volkswagen electric vehicle like the ID3 or ID4. And the mobile app helps you to yeah, set some settings in your car, um, especially regarding your battery, obviously, because it's an electric car. So it helps <coughs> you find charging stations, public charging stations. It helps you manage the charging process, be it at home or at a public charging station. Uh, you can also find your vehicle <laughs> with this app and you can set the air conditioning, for example, but there are many other features and plugins in this application, so it's actually a pretty, pretty complex uh, app. And we wanted to do um, tracking because, we, as Chris also highlighted already, we want to do product improvements, right? How are the users interacting with the application? In one screen, a user can do many different actions like changing a slider, clicking on buttons, scrolling up and down, just opening a page would be an event in itself. And as Chris also already mentioned, um, schemas are a nice way uh, using Snowplow to capture this data. So at the end, we want to capture the user behavior or like the behavior uh, during a session. And um, schemas allow us to very flexibly capture what we are interested in. And why do we want to um, capture this data? Because we have certain business questions, right, that we want to answer with them. And this brings me actually to the next section. Oh, sorry, I went the wrong way. <laughs> um, I went a little bit overboard with the Prezi uh, Zoom effects. <laughs> sorry for that. 
Yeah, this brings me to the next section. Um, my colleague Taryn will talk about the business questions that we're interested in in detail. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Matthias, uh, and welcome again. Uh, I will talk about the business questions and uh, why we are tracking the data and what we have done with the uh, tracking data with Snowflow. So, okay, we collect data, we sort them out, and we store them in nice net databases. But at the end, of course, we would like to talk about what we can do with the data, how we can uh, improve our product, and also how we can uh, improve the user journey. So um, I will talk about some um, small um, use cases. Uh, first one is the most used features, and then the retention rate, and then user uh, funnel, some spe specific user funnel. So okay, um, in the um, I'll of course talk about this WeConnect ID app and uh, which features users do use the most in the app. So in the uh, WeConnect ID app, we have uh, four uh, tabs: uh, home page, vehicle tab, uh, maps tab, and profile tab. And uh, users um, mostly use this uh, vehicle tab, and I will also uh, focus on this vehicle tab. So what uh, can users uh, navigate or uh, do with this uh, in this uh, vehicle tab? It's, uh, they can start charging or stop charging, or they can uh, turn uh, air conditioning on off. Uh, they can set a timer to open a AC, or uh, again, like starting charging, etc. So uh, there are uh, many features in, on uh, that tab. Uh, I will focus on the charging events. Um, uh, this is one of the dashboards that we are using for uh, understanding charging feature. So the all data on this dashboard is coming from uh, our custom schema, which is called, uh, which is uh, set for the charging events. So here, what we can see, uh, we can see uh, the future usage based on number of events. Uh, how many of the users are like uh, starting charging or stopping charging? And also we can see the uh, based on number of users and also we can see a percentage of the active users who are using the charging feature. So we can understand how it's useful for the actively uh, active users in general. And also we can see uh, at which uh, better level uh, users uh, start charging or stopping uh, their chargers. And um, yeah, we can again uh, see which uh, access points is more useful for the users uh, to go to the, like, start for ch uh, starting charging or stopping charging if it is a better for, from, let's say, vehicle tab or, let's say, widget, or how they are using this reduced uh, chance to fit and et cetera. So all the features we can monitor from here and then we can take some um, uh, insights from, the, uh, from this data here. And then, uh, actually, I would like to continue with the another uh, major KPI, which is the uh, retention rate, and uh, we can see <coughs> how frequently do users use the app. So here uh, we can see um, how long um, users are using the app, let's say after they uh, install the app, uh, after one week, uh, how many of them still in the, uh, using the app. Or we can see the major um, KPI here, new users or uh, weekly, daily, and uh, monthly active users. So we can track uh, and monitor all of them from uh, this dashboard. Uh, they are coming from all uh, session context schema and also a specific event schema. And the last use case I would like to talk about is the uh, user funnels. So for example, what's the conversion rate for registration to the uh, public charging stations? So here we can again see the, uh, let's say, number of users um, on a weekly basis, and also we can see uh, at uh, some specific funnel, for example, for the registration funnel, how many of the users who start entry screen uh, end up with the uh, su su successful subscription. So uh, we can see at which point uh, users are most uh, likely to churn, uh, what is the problem there, and how we can help the users uh, going through the funnel at the end. And also it's possible for us to, um, to realize or notify if there's something unusual in the pattern for the registration success rate, et cetera. So um, 
Yeah, that's actually the uh, end of my part. Uh, these are just uh, some uh, examples that how we use snowplow tracking in our um, uh, to answer our business questions. And now uh, Juan will continue with the one shot case. Thank you, Jaden. Uh, yeah, we were recently uh, approached by uh, the OneShop team, which is a very ambitious project from uh, Carriot, uh, which is, yeah, uh, a shop where you can buy your next uh, car from the Volkswagen brand, uh, for, from any of them. And uh, it's quite a big project uh, uh, for a shop, as you may expect. And uh, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, how we have been using uh, Snowplow here and uh, yeah, why we think it's, it's a cool solution to solve their problem. But let's go first perhaps to what they, the goal that they ha had at the beginning. So for this shop, they want to evaluate the features of the shop and across all of the brands. As Matthias already mentioned you, it's not only Volkswagen, but it's a lot of different brands. But also for each brand, you have different flavors in each country, right? It's, there's Audi Italy and there's Audi Germany. And uh, drive uh, from uh, the features of, from all of these brands and countries and improve the shopping, the overall shopping experience. So quite an ambitious project uh, itself. And with that, <coughs> we get to, to problems, right? Because um, every brand and, and every country, they use already perhaps had a different uh, tracking implementation or they're using different analytic service. And uh, this uh, is obviously the recipe for a very messy data set. Uh, we really want to analyze and uh, make uh, a better uh, or cre create a better shop, but Doing this with this requirement uh, of handling data from different sources, it's a uh, uh, can be very, very, very tricky. So if we look a little bit what the, some of the brands are currently using, uh, you can already imagine how the data would look like with different conventions, with different namings, etc., etc. So let's take the case, uh, for example, of uh, Volkswagen in Germany. Uh, they're using Google Analytics, and this is like the conventions that they're using for the data. This is all just uh, made up examples. For example, the price looks uh, different. Some include the commas uh, of the cents. Some inc uh, may include a dot. Or, for example, Volkswagen <coughs> names the, the, the vehicle's model, but <coughs> another brand m may name it name. And you end up with a very, very messy database. And uh, I, as a data scientist, definitely do not want to spend that much time cleaning the data, and this would be a very, very uh, messy work, right? We want to crunch the data to deploy uh, next generation machine learning algorithms, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Cleaning the data, it's uh, yeah, not, not one of the sexiest uh, parts of the job, right? So how do we avoid it? Uh, so that's when uh, this whole schema things that we've been listening about come into, come into play. And, uh, uh, what we've come about with the integration team of, uh, of the OneShop is uh, to create a data layer, right? But for a good quality data layer using Snowplow so that it runs uh, here before uh, every brand uh, de deploys their analytic tools of preference or whatever and have the data with a the parameters that we want as we want it before it, it goes to the next stage. And with this, we can really make cool insights and, it's, and it's, uh, it looks cleaner uh, automatically. And we can be, or the, the, the OneShop team can be as thorough as they want in, in how, they, how they want the, the data to be like restricted. Because with these schemas, um, we've heard uh, a little bit about it. I just want to dive or include a little bit of details. You can be very precise on the type of variables that you that you're using. For example, uh, is it is it better to, to make the price perhaps a string, although it's a little bit weird because of these commas and, and dots? I mean, you can really define this, or or make it an integer and then uh, say it in 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 a, in a later 
uh, uh, parameter what, what you want. Uh, you can uh, define max lengths of things. Uh, we're integrating data from different teams. So how do we agree on conventions? And yes, you can build a confluence page. But this is a single point of truth where developers and also business owners can come to and read it, right? The, this is it, this is it. There's that, uh, that's the thing and uh, what's there is the truth and that's how we expect the data. And I then as a, a data scientist or uh, as a team of data scientists can go right away and, and, and crunch it, right? And uh, yeah, this takes us to the, the, the future of uh, what we want to create with, with such a data set, uh, and that would be, uh, yeah, analyze the user journey. You can automatically, uh, with uh, such a high quality data set, uh, produce uh, such things like Sankey diagrams or uh, any other type of uh, visualizations to see where are the users landing, are, are there any loops between the different stages uh, that perhaps we can see how to optimize. Are the users really going to where we want them to go uh, um, yes, and, and so these are the things that can be done or uh, produce some of the nice dashboards that the, you were mentioning before, Chad, and, and so on and so on. And yeah, so that's, uh, that's what we uh, could do. But uh, uh, this is when you use schemas. And uh, today we have, all, we have also had clients that uh, have not been using these uh, schemas. And uh, we've run into a little bit of, uh, of things and, and troubles that uh, Aleta has uh, prepared for us today. So I hand over to her. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> yes, I kind of love how everyone is praising here the advanced schemas and I get to talk about, uh, about not using advanced schemas. Yes, so exactly the same way as Snowplow grew quite a lot, especially in the last two years and three years and even longer than that. That's also how our project grew kind of a lot and also our client readiness grew quite a lot. I'm talking about client readiness because um, the case that Juan just presented, OneShop, is one of our clients. Another client that I'm going to uh, focus on a bit is related to, to these public charging stations throughout all over the country. So our project basically has a lot of uh, separate clients. So basically before the, the times of these advanced schemas, um, what Snowplow would do, being uh, very much focused on web analytics tracking and focusing on the marketing field, field especially, they would basically take whatever um, <coughs> field is relative to web tracking and analysis in further down the line, they would add this extra field as a new column into a very fat table. And this very fat table is what we nowadays know as atomic that events table, including a lot of fields relating to marketing attribution, to every specific event detail that you can imagine. So it might or might not have happened that uh, this particular client in these old times started out without custom <coughs> schemas. But to um, explain a little bit of uh, context, um, I'm going to also uh, mention the two event types Snowplow um, offers and covers. One of them is this unstructured event that everyone talks about nowadays. This is the advanced schemas uh, topic. This is basically super flexible because we can define whatever event type we can just think about. These are um, different <coughs> JSONs, it's really easy with key value pairs. You can go as wide as your fantasies go about events. And then we have these uh, structured events. Uh, these are kind of old school, let's say like that. And these are these um, group for generic custom uh, events with five fields being available <coughs> to, to store your data. And these five fields would be part of these atomic events table. So it's category, action, label, property, and value. In our case, uh, it's even more extreme because out of these five, we are not even using two of them, and the action is only one click, so it's totally useless. Oh yeah, also categories is literally useless. So we are literally only having one field here that would be somewhat useful for tracking, and this is the label. And this is eventually coming back to what you guys just also told us uh, before that this is kind of the, the point when you have data, but you just have a, an abundance of, of like uh, you have just an overload of data that is maybe not really good of a quality. 
What is also noteworthy to mention that in the case of JSON uh, following and uh, schema following um, events, every entry, if you store your data in Redshift at the end of the, the line, every entry will be stored in the custom events table as well as on the atomic events. So basically, uh, in our project, when we use all of our clients' data, we only rely to the custom event tables. We, we never really have um, uh, use cases to use the atomic events. But for the structured events, we only have the, the atomic events tables. And let me tell you the absolute negative point to this. As you can see, step by step, with these SC labels, we, we have introduced a new underscore and a new level of complexity. But this is definitely not, uh, not good if you think about user funnels or user <coughs> journeys. It's a bit like uh, when you're trying to, to save a, a PDF and you end up final, final version two um, naming conventions. Yeah, let's, let's not go there. And uh, it all goes really um, problematic when we just look at our table growth over the time and our table sizes. Our events table is by far our biggest table. Especially if you think about how little we use it, we only use it for one client after all. So to remediate these issues, um, we were thinking of quite some scenarios, but um, let's start with the first one, to drop this atomic events table. The thing is with this atomic events table is after all our very core table, it contains all our relevant uh, web analytics data. And we could argue that this is our biggest table, and in our case, most of the columns are null, so we could just as well drop it. Um, might not be very well appreciated. <laughs> then we could also think of removing these null columns. But then on the other side, we, we know that null columns in columnar storage do not cost money, so why not just keep it there? In our case, this is literally only one client, so it's still uh, an issue. And if we think about it, we still need to query this big table. So we could as well just uh, drop these uh, columns or the whole table, right? Uh, actually, all jokes aside, we were thinking about some, some other solutions. Uh, we were thinking about splitting this big events table um, and structuring it based on all these unstructured events and then keeping whatever um, is related to this one client as a separate one and only further going down into analysis with this or we were also trying to kind of crawl through all these uh, random labels with the extensive amount of underscores and try to build up uh, schemas and try to pretend, and pretend to, to follow some um, Snowflow advanced schema. Uh, however, we are also very interested in, in your input and in your thought process. What do you think or what is this legacy um, issue that we are here facing and what do you think in your perspective makes sense to, to, um, to tackle in here. And with this, I would also like to, to transition into a question uh, and a discussion topic. And I would also like to, to thank you for all your attention um, so far. And uh, we are high. <laughs> are there any questions from the audience? Um, Randall, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, do, you, do you also use Snowplow to capture events direct from the car, like from the? Um, um, unfortunately, the not yet. Unfortunately, not yet. But it's an interesting use case, actually, definitely. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, can you share a bit more about the ML models you built to optimize uh, the one shot? Um, any interesting? features that are predicted? Uh, we are not doing ML yet uh, in the one-shop case, so, um, but that's just an outlook. I mean, we haven't started anything, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah. Have to do another talk. Yeah, that would be another talk, sorry about that. Yeah. Anything else? Otherwise, I would say we come to the very last uh, presentation of this evening. Uh, great that you're all still here. I know it's <laughs> Wednesday, um, Wednesday 7.30, okay. <laughs> but yeah, really, wow, uh, so many people here. And yeah, Randall, bring it up for Randall, um, our last presenter of the evening. Okay.